Am I working? I am. Hello and welcome to the library. My name is Sarah and I am your host and narrator for this evening. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. It was a long weekend for us here in, I don't know if it was Canada-wide or just Ontario, but we just got over a long weekend and I'm not over it yet. <laughs> so, um, we are going to be continuing on today, starting with chapter six of The Wife is First. I know that I mentioned last week, last Wednesday, that uh, this Tuesday's episode would be a um, uh, what married thrice to salted fish because it has updated up to 70 chapters, so we can continue on. I've decided to give it one more week and then start again uh, next week only because I'm really enjoying The Wife is First and very selfishly I want to get a few more chapters in uh, just bef um, before we get back into on and off on and off like uh, with Married Thrice um, also to give it a bit of a like a week reprieve we'll see um I don't know if I have many uh, announcements for today. I'm just really excited to get going. So let me pop on over. Okay. Uh, everything looks to be going. Yeah, so recently I've been actually listening to these episodes as I drive down to the cottage. So I'm like, well, I'm in the middle of The Wife is First, and I know that I need at least an hour and 15 minutes going down and another hour 15 coming back from the cottage. So let me just get a few <laughs> few more episodes in uh, for me to listen to back and forth. So yeah, so it's all about my selfishness <laughs> is why we're going to continue on with Wife is First. Um, I will apologize ahead of time if there's yawning. I will do my best not to stutter. Um, I noticed that a lot when I was... Um, listening back, I found it very, uh, what's the word, um, uh, abrasive and jolting when I would uh, stop and start and pause. So I'm going to make a new rule. I'm going to make a new rule here and now, whether or not I actually stick to it is, you know, 50-50. Okay, but new rule. I will only engage with chat before and after chapters um and the only time is so okay so let me <laughs> put some uh, conjunctions on those um if we get a follower subscribe or whatever i will interact with that but if it's like chatting back if it's popping in to just say hello i'm new and then it's like, hello, welcome, and I'll still do those. But as for the actual chatting and going back and forth, I can understand how for those lurkers in the background and those listening to this later on, I completely get that it's a little irritating when I'm like, I don't, I cannot see what you are talking about. It's irritating. Continue on. So I will do my best to try and, excuse me, keep that top of mind. And remember to do so. I don't... Oh, I do want to talk about... Well, no, you know what? I'm going to save it. I just picked up a brand new manga today that I had never heard of. It actually only released today. Um, and it wasn't on the shelves like... Um, you know how usually when a new book comes out, they'll put it... Or at least at my bookstore. They'll put it in the, in the middle as you're walking by to draw attention to like, these are our new releases. This wasn't that. So I had never heard of it. I have not, I'm re not really terribly certain about what it's about. I literally picked this for the cover. The cover looks very interesting to me. Um, only for to buy it and like it was a complete impulse buy. Um, only to get it home and realize that it's brand new. It just dropped today. And it has pretty good reviews, and the story is absolutely something I would um, I would read. So I will have a manga review for you after next after this weekend. So next Tuesday, I got actually I picked up two. 
<laughs> but I'm one of those ones where I read so much. Oh, this is a BL manga. Or could be a shonen I manga. But I read so much BL and shonen I that I don't know what I've read and not read. So there's I picked up another one as well that I'm not 100% sure that I've read. But it looked super cute, so I picked it up. And I'll let you know how they both are. So the one that I mentioned that I that just dropped today is the other world the other world's the other world's books depend on the bean counter. Yeah. Once upon a time in the not too distant past, a holy maiden was summoned. Not just any holy, holy maiden, one hailing from modern Japan. But this story is not her story. This is the tale of the humble accountant Kondu. Yeah, Kondo. Who accompanied her and who accompanied her and his trials and woes as he accounts in a new world. But no tale is complete without a love interest, and who better to play that role than the handsome Knight Captain Aresh? Will he begin a personal quest to save said be to save said bean counter, who toils around the clock? Or is Kondu doomed to be married to his work evermore? The art in it looks really freaking good, so I'm looking forward to that. That was... I'm just... I'm only telling you because I'm excited to read it. <laughs> Alrighty. Let me take a little drink. And we'll get started. Oh, and that's, it's a series. It's so flipping rare for BL and Shonen and I to actually get a series that if I see, if it has a one on it, I am super flipping excited. There's very, very few uh, that get more than one book. Uh, and if they get more than two books, it's astounding. I can only think of three off the top of my head, just off the top of my head, that have more than two volumes. So this one promises to have more, so I'm looking forward to that. Second one drops, it looked like August 30th. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see if it's any good. If it's crap, I will tell you. Right, let's go on. I'm coming off of a long weekend where there was company I was not expecting. And I'm an introvert. <laughs> uh, dude. Unless it's a convention, people are exhausting. That's what I go with. Conventions are different. Okay, I'm going to... Yeah, okay, before we get started, I just want to... I'm going to break this down. I'm not sure if any of you listening are an introvert. But here's how I view social interaction. Because there's different versions of it. Different levels, I should say. Social interaction for me is incredibly stressful. And stressful in a way that... Picture everyone in the world, everyone you meet, every single person, plant, animal, what have you has a vibration of static around it, okay? And so whenever your personal static comes into contact with other people's static, there's a reaction. And if you're with someone, okay, let's put it like this. Say you're at a convention. You're a nerd. If you're listening to this, you're probably a little nerdy. Um, but say you're a nerd or into fan conventions, anime, um, Marvel, uh, DC Comics, video games, board games, Magic the Gathering, D&D, whatever. When you go and you're immersed with people who fluctuate on the same frequency as you, they're into the same, and it's not even a, um, a, a, that they're into the same things. You can have people that, you know, I do the exact same job or I'm into the exact same things, but I hate this person. So that's not it. But when you meet like-minded individuals who, who vibrate at the same frequency as you, it's very comfortable. It's almost recharging, right? 
in the way that you're feeding off each other's energy and there's just that click and these are the people that you can have around you any time of the day, all day, and you're not exhausted because they're they're sucking the energy off of you. These are the people that when you meet, you are recharged, you're energized, you are you are happy, excited. It's a high almost when you're when you get around these people or when you get in these instances. But then you also have people, and a lot of the times they're in-laws. <laughs> But say it's extended family, it's certain people at work, it's customers or clients at work, um, it's it's people, it's not even that you don't mesh with them. They can be extremely pleasant and you can get along really, really well, but there's something about their energies and the and the frequency that they vibrate on that the statics just don't mesh. Either it's combative, so it's constantly, you're constantly on edge and just irritated and you feel like your skin's crawling and you're just like, I'm frustrated and I don't know why and they haven't done anything, but I'm mad at them. Like, it's just, ugh. like, get away from me. <laughs> Those types of people, they haven't done anything. They're probably super pleasant, but there's something about their vibrations that doesn't mesh. It's, it's, it, it's not even that they repel, it's that it literally feels like sandpaper on your aura. Like, it's just not. And But then you have other people where it's, again, these are, has nothing to do with personality. It's just waves. <laughs> and But then you have other people where they suck the energy out of you. And they're so draining. And, and there's... People call them, a lot of times for these, uh, people call them emotional vampires. And it's not that they're, again, don't take these as a ne negative connotation. It's just that these are people that people can only take for a certain amount of time. And then they have to, you have to go away so that I can recharge from having to had to visit with you. Um, for introverts, a lot of the time, that's certain types of extroverts. I find that introverts and extroverts, if you can find... <laughs> I saw this one on, on Instagram where a woman was saying how she's an introvert, but she wishes that she could have her on-call or platonic extrovert partner. <laughs> because all, instro all introverts, I'm a firm believer, all introverts need that one extrovert that's going to take them to places, got to hold the conversations, and introverts are, and but they're okay with the introvert just sitting beside and just quietly enjoying everything that's going on. We don't need to participate. We don't actually want to be include, like, included in the conversation. We just like to be there. <laughs> like, just to, like, getting us out of the house is half the battle. But if you can make us comfortable, we will enjoy our time while we're there. Just don't ask us to carry the conversation. But you get these people where their energy is either so high or it doesn't mesh. It's it's two um, it's two magnets repelling each other, right? Or it's that one where you have magnet A and you've got <laughs> magnet what is it? Let's put it like batteries. So you have an introvert, which is a triple A most of the time, but sometimes a double A, so a regular battery. And then you have like the C's and D's, those huge ass square chunky batteries. And you're asking the little, the little double A battery to put out the same power as those big chunky ones. And we're just not going to do it. So it's overwhelming for us to try and keep up with those other kinds of energies. So this weekend, I had a huge group. So what was that? It would be two couples. So there's six. And each of them had two kids. So that many. And then you also have an, the one that they belong to. I'm, I don't know who's listening to this, so I'm not going to give any specifics and then you have the one that they belong to and then you also have the one that connects us all all of those that i just mentioned are very extroverted out there people you have 
one of them who was like reminds you of like kind of like the mean girl in high school and then you have all of their siblings who are wonderful people but um they're just very high energy they're very outgoing they want to but there's no connection there and so i find them very abrasive and i was not told that they would be there and i was not in the right headspace to put myself out there for all that. It was not fun. Um, but then you had it where as soon as they left, literally within an hour that all of them left, new people came. And these people were great. Their, their energy was much calmer, much lower, much more even. And like they brought two kids as well, but their kids were awesome. Like we played games the whole time, like board games the whole time. And it was fantastic. I loved every minute of their company. So it's not about people. It's about how the vibrations and the waves and how you mesh with, it's not even meshing with people. It's the energy that they put out. Now, here's what, here's an interesting one. I'm going to throw this out there. Uh, on the crazy side, it was nurses, stay-at-home moms, I think social work is what they do. Okay, those were the ones that I couldn't comp I couldn't compute their energies. I had to go away like a bunch of times. I'm like, I just need quiet time. Just me and my dog, we're going to go away. And... Uh, but when the second group came, you have a nurse and you have a police officer. And their energy was so much calmer and level. And it was so nice to hang out with. But again, it's all, it's not personalities. I've, I'm a firm believer that it has nothing to do with personalities. It's purely the energy and the static that surrounds them. That depend that determine whether or not how much you can take. And I think extroverts as a whole are are those people that can take more energy and can give more energy. They're just a bigger battery. So if an introvert is a triple A, it's a little itty bitty battery, then you've got a natural extrovert is one of those huge round D batteries. Do you see what I'm saying? So introverts cannot be extroverts and extroverts cannot be introverts unless they're meeting in the middle. Like you can have grades of them, just like you can have different grades of batteries. But introverts, we lose our energy a lot freaking quicker than an extrovert does. So me, myself, I'm an introverted extrovert. So when you get me around my people, I can be the center of attention. I can be the life of the part. I can be the leader of the group. That's what I'm good at. Um, if you put me in a situation where I have been told that I am, that I don't belong, or that I can see that I don't belong in this situation, or uh, with these people, with this group, I will hang back because I know that I have nothing to contribute and I'm not willing to put myself out there. So here, the difference is... <laughs> So my, I'll just put it out there. My brothers are very normal. So they've got good jobs. They've got good families. They've um, worked their way up the ladder. They have, they have the 2.5 kids with the picket fence. Okay. They're normal. I'm clearly, as I'm talking to you, not quote unquote normal. And I pride myself on that. I am different. I am abstract. I am not the norm. And I don't fit into any of your pigeonholes. They, however, do. So the difference is when I go to, say, a birthday party of theirs, I remember this correct, distinctly, it was their birthday party, um, all of their friends, work friends, people that they had grown up with all their life, people that I had grown up all my life, everyone was there. And I stood in the corner the whole time just on my phone begging for it to be over like please dear god when can i leave because i don't belong here this is not a space for me i have nothing in common with any of these people 
and it's just awkward and awful and please dear god get me out of here that's an you know a uh, and it was only like a dinner party type setting now put me at a anime convention or a fan convention i am the first one to stand up and ask the questions i will more than happily i'm actually thrilled to so excited to be able to run some panels of my own to host to moderate um to be out there and just be, be loud and excessive and talk to everyone if we're standing in a line i am talking to you we're having a conversation <laughs> so it's those differences um I think most people are like that, but there are just extroverts are better at being able to integrate and be the life of the party in any fucking situation, which is sounds just freaking exhausting to me. <laughs> like, I don't even, who would want that? Um, but my brothers are like that, both of them. They have no problem with it. I can fake it for a little while if I have to, but if I don't absolutely have to, I don't want to. So yeah, so that's the weekend that I'm coming and it's it's hard to describe to people who don't who don't get it, who've never had that problem. So I get my mother who is she was always she always used to be an extrovert. Now some things recently in the last few years have happened to make her a little more introverted. Um but she still loves to have no, she doesn't actually. That's that's something happened that changed her energies and she's still trying to reset from having her energies change. She used to be life of the party, was never going to miss a good time, like was always had friends over, was out at people's houses. Uh, and this is before COVID obviously, but even, um, but that's before this incident. And then after this incident, she started to have social anxiety. She doesn't really want a whole bunch of people around anymore. She's, you know, becoming more introverted. And there's a part, part of me that goes, well, let me explain, let me help you navigate this new mentality of yours. And she goes, no, I just want to read all the self-help books. I'll tell you what I read in, in some other book. And that'll, that'll, t and I, that I'll tell you how it's helping me. And then that'll help you. No. Introversion is not something that can be cured by self-help books. You need to look internally. Self-help books can help, but they're not the guidebook on, in her, in her words, quote unquote, how to fix yourself. Introverts don't need to be fixed. We know our limits and we're fine with them for the most part. So yeah, so that's the thing that we're currently, I'm just, just <laughs> so yeah so this weekend was very long and it just in dealing with I, I thought that it was very interesting just dealing with the different energies like yeah I won't say any names I want to say something but I'm like I don't know who's listening to this so I'm gonna not <laughs> um that's also sometimes why if you're, even if you're an animal person, some dogs or cats will, are like just assholes to you. Nothing to do with you as a person. It's just your energies don't mesh. I'm also, I, I kill all plants. <laughs> My energies do not mesh with plants. Although, I shouldn't say that, water plants, water plants I, I don't kill. <laughs> Those I can do. I don't even trust myself with like succulents. I, I, mm -mm. I'd like to, but my whole tank is my fish tank. I'm just looking at it. It's all green and full of climbing plants and all the different trees and greenery. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, it's all about just the energies. The, you know, when people say the vibe, the vibe was bad. The energies are telling you to get the fuck out. <laughs> That's also, I want to, for guys, women will get this as soon as i'm going to say this all women all females even 
some effeminate males. You'll completely understand what I'm saying here. The term creepy. Whenever guys hear, guys are like, oh, well, you, so you went on the date? Yeah, how'd it go? Well, he was a little creepy. Oh, so you're going to see him again? No, he was creepy. <laughs> like, So I know a lot of men especially have no idea what creepy means. Creepy is a vibe that women instinctively, because it will save our lives, pick up. <laughs> so whenever you hear creepy, that's not a good thing. <laughs> so like, it was, but yeah, so that's, it's a vibe thing. A lot of people don't realize how many different terms we have to describe a vibe, like a vibration that we're getting from something. I was like, nope. Bad vibes, can't do it. It's a little creepy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, we'll save our lives. <laughs> All right, I, I feel like I've gotten way off on a tangent. I don't know why I wanted to express that, but I did. And so now, okay, now let me go back to our reading screen. See, I haven't moved. Uh, yeah. I don't. How did I get on that that topic? I know I've been thinking about this past weekend and how tired I was. Mm. That's probably what it was. Because especially when you have all these different vibrations all around you coming at you all the time, it's constant. You get a headache and you get tired. Alrighty, I think we're ready to go after all that. So... Deep breath. Ooh, okay. And marker. Chapter 26. The Gathering. The news that King Cheng was very fond of the princess quickly spread in the upper circles. That's wrong. It should be Wong Cheng. In the afternoon of the next day, Jing Xiao sent his Wang Fei to Hui Wei restaurant and asked Zhou Jin to take him to the monthly male's wives' gathering in the capital. Oh, I don't know. I remember this now. This is good. This is good. Zhou Jin did not wear brightly colored clothing today, and his dark blue Chang Pao made him appear much more settled. Other brother Zhou, I'll be entrusting Jun Qing in your care. Jing Xiao cupped his hands in salute of Boss Zhou. Don't worry, Wang Yi. Zhou Jin conducted himself in a very candid manner, and he was also older than all of them. After becoming familiar with him, even Muhan Zhang followed along, calling him Elder Brother Zhou. Muhan Zhang looked at Jing Xiao, who was being as long-winded as, <laughs> as if he were really entrusting a child to him, and smiled helplessly. Wang Yi can be at ease when heading back. It's not like I'll get lost, right? Jing Xiao scratched his head and mounted his horse. Most of the w male wives attending the gathering in the capital were from high-ranking and distinguished families. But since Zhen Qing was so intelligent, he shouldn't suffer any grievances. Thus, feeling reassured, he left the carriage and young Zhu behind, riding Xiao He by himself to find his elder brother for tea. The scenery in the south of the city is good. Many aristocratic families had gardens built there. <laughs> Sorry? Sorry? You didn't see that? The monthly gatherings are mostly in the Mo Garden of the Duke. Are, the monthly gatherings are mostly in the Mo Garden of Duke Mao's household. It is an unwritten rule for second sons and bastard sons to marry male wives, though not necessarily to always obey it. However, Duke Mao's household has always established that this as a family rule, even if they didn't like men. Any bastard sons must marry a male wife. Therefore, the number of male wives in Duke Mao's household is the largest among all the aristocratic families in the capital. 
After entering Mo Garden, one could hear the sound of a xiju. Xiju. After walking through the layer upon layers of ink bamboo, an expansive waterside pavilion appeared. There were tables and chairs placed on the pavilion as well as tea and refreshments. On the shore, there were women performing music, one zither and two bamboo panpipes, the sounds faintly entering one's ear. Nothing more beautiful could be imagined. This place is quite elegant. Mu Hanjang looked at the several people sitting quietly on the waterside pavilion, listening to the music. His original worry of a lively scene, like when women came to visit each other's homes, did not appear. He could not help but feel relieved. Elder Brother Joe is here. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Oh. Elder Brother Joe is here. Seeing Jiu Jin, several people got up in succession and politely cupped their hands in greeting. Who is this? A man dressed in light blue long gown who led the rest of the pavilion asked. He was about 25 or 26 years old, similar to Jiu Jin. His facial features were elegant, though having, a very, though having very deep lines between his eyebrows, likely caused by frequent frowning. This is the Cheng Wang Fei, Mu Gonzu. Zhou Jin introduced him to everyone with a smile. Male wives usually didn't like other people to call them Fu Ren, or young mistress. So between them, they addressed each other as Gonzu. Greetings, Wang Fei. Hearing this, several people looked at each other and came forth to make their salutations. On this kind of occasion, everyone needn't be so polite. Mu Han Jang humbly and politely let everyone rise. I've heard that Wen Yang Gunzi has remarkable bearing. Seeing it for myself today, indeed, his reputation is well deserved. The man in charge smiled gently and let them in. It was but a false reputation obtained from a poetry gathering in my frivolous youth. When Mu Han Jang heard this man call him by his previous title, he felt as if he had returned to his former days, the time when he attended the poetry gatherings of scholars, and his mood could not help but become cheerful. Towards this person in front of him, he also felt a little closer. Zhou Jing, Zhou Jin introduced them to Mu Han Jang one by one, the leader, surnamed Lin, was the male wife of the second young master of the Marquis Ding of the South. The others were basically all wives of various court officials. <laughs> How come the ones from Duke Mao's household aren't here? Zhou Ji. Yeah. Zhou Ji. It's Jin, isn't it? One second. It is Jin. I'm putting this as a typo. I want to say it's a typo. Because all of a sudden they're calling him Jing. And I'm... Okay. I'm going to continue calling him Jin. Not Jing. That's weird. I don't know why they did that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How come the ones from Duke Mao's household aren't here yet? Zhou Jin asked Lin Gongzi. They and the Gongzi from the Marquis of Yong Cheng's household went to fight cocks in the backwoods. We didn't want to participate, so we stayed to listen to music here. When Lin Gongzi spoke, he involuntarily wrinkled his brow and looking rather worried. What's wrong? Seeing Lin Gongzi's worried frown, Zhou Jin couldn't help asking. The second young master insisted on marrying the young lady from an official's family as a secondary wife. Zhang Gongzi, who was sitting at the side, 
Oh, sorry. I'm gonna keep. Uh... Yeah, I'm gonna keep it. Jang Gongsu, who was sitting at the side cracking melon seeds, said for him. Elder brother Lin's life is already difficult, but marrying, but marrying again to a secondary wife of high birth, I. Mu Han Jang slowly tasted the tea, and frequently listened to the few people talking to each other. These men all had gotten educated, and their words were full of hidden meaning. In every case, they would touch on a subject, but not say too much. But with just a word or two, he could still tell that for most male wives, their lives at home were not very good. Their husbands were mostly bastard sons, and sometimes they were forced to marry their male wives. Moreover, few sons were raised to become male wives, and most of them did not know how to manage the household. Moreover, the concubines would be even more difficult to manage once they had sons. So if they did not have their husband's favor, even if they could reach the point of treating each other with mutual respect as husband and wife, men who were trapped in the inner court would surely have their will, would surely have their will whittled away, and it would be very hard for them to get anything according to their own wishes. I heard that last month Chang Wang requested an imperial decree to demote his secondary wife to a third-rank concubine. How did Mu Gongzi manage to do that? The talkative Jang Gongzi suddenly steered the conversation to Mu Han Jang. Everything was what Wang Yi wished to do. Mu Han Jang put down his teacup and indifferently said, regarding his own family matters, he wasn't planning to say too much. You rascal, why are you acting like a woman now? Always prying into the matters of others' heads of households. Zhou Jin gave Jiang Gongzi a slap to the head, stopping the subject of the conversation. Mu Han Jiang picked up his teacup once again. He found that although Zhou Jin... He found that although Zhou Jin's husband was only a little assistant minister and he being only a restaurant owner himself, he still had a high reputation among these noble male wives. Everyone honored him with the name of Elder Brother Joel. Besides his straightforward personality and easygoing manner of treating people, in Xiao Yun's seven or eight years of marriage, and not having a concubine serving in his husband's bedroom, was a real reason why people admired him. A male wife couldn't leave behind a son, but could learn how to become a shrew, managing a husband to pre managing a husband to preventing him from getting concubines, really needed some extraordinary methods. Yo, I was wondering who this Gongzu wearing such a splendid clothing was. It turns out it's Han Zheng. A peculiar voice came from outside of the pavilion. When everyone looked up, they saw five or six men coming out of the bamboo forest, each bringing several attendants with them, grandiosely making their way towards the pavilion. Mu Han Jiang frowned, recognizing the speaker. It was none other than Du Ying Ho, who had been his classmate for five years. The scholar that the Mo family learned w the scholar that the Mu the scholar that the Mu family learned with was none other than an uncle in the clan who came in third in the imperial examinations. Due to his great fame, other relatives in the family would also send their children to come study. This Du Ying Ho was the North Marquess's own nephew because he hated Mu Han Jiang since he always received praise from the teacher, he set himself against him everywhere and anywhere. I haven't seen you for two years, but I actually thought you went to go take the tri the triannual 
the triennial provincial imperial exam. Turns out you married in the, into the Duke Mao's household. Lu Hanjiang sat still, glancing at the overbearing Du Ying Ho, and continued to drink his tea peacefully. Hmm. Even though you were a successful candidate in the Imperial Provision ex Provision ex ah. Imperial Provincial Exam, weren't you still married off by your aunt? Du Ying Hao sneered. The Du household was not some distinguished or noble one. Even though he was the second son of the official wife, he was still used to establish connections and was married off to Duke Mao's third young master. Don't be rude. Du Ying Ho intended to say something more, but was stopped by his second sister-in-law's exclamation. This generation of the Mo Dukedom's household had three male wives. After giving their greetings, they seated themselves one after the other. Yesterday, I went to the North Marquess's residence to give birthday congratulations and saw a rather interesting thing. Du Ying Ho, seeing that even if Mu Han Jiang was married off, he was still the object of other people's admiration and respect, and also had a respectful husband, his heart felt it was not fair, so he couldn't help but want to hurt him with a couple of sentences. After growing tired from playing, people were chatting over tea, but hearing this, they asked him what he was talking about. One... Chang Wong saved a very beautiful woman under the ho horse of the fourth prince, Du Ying Ho said, smiling and looking towards the expressionless Mu Han Jiang, deliberately drawing out his words. I heard that Chang Wong liked her so much that she was brought directly to his villa to become another concubine. Hearing this, the originally lively atmosphere suddenly cooled down, and everyone became awkwardly silent, not knowing how to continue the conversation. In their hearts, however, they thought about how the Cheng Wong Fei turned out to be not turned out to not be favored much either. They had heard that Cheng Wong had demoted the secondary wife for him, but in the twinkling of the eye he had found another concubine. Mu Han Jiang looked at Do Ying Hao, who had a face of mockery, and only felt amused. Even after so many years, this person was still so childish. Looking up at the sky, It's getting late. I've been staying in the villa these days, so I need to leave a bit earlier. Saying that, he put down the teacup and got up to take his leave. Cheng Wang's villa is in the east of the city, and the Mo Garden is in the south of the city, truly a bit far away. It was no good to detain him, so everyone got up to send him off. Third young brother is not sensible, asking Wang Fei to not take offense. After sending him off outside of the Mo Garden, the second Gong Su of Duke Mao's household apologized to Mu Hanjiang. Mu Hanjing smiled, but did not answer. Yun Ju drove the carriage over and was waiting for him to get on. From the distance sounded the clip-clopping of horse hooves. I don't want to do it. I, I, I should be prepared for this. Okay, uh... Okay, just a sec. <laughs> Just a second. Just a second. Uh... <laughs> this happens enough that I really... Oh, that wasn't on. <laughs> Can you just a sec? Let's try that again. Okay, ready?
<laughs> a bright and clear whinny sounded. A fine black steed quickly stopped in front of the crowd. The man on the horse's back was tall and straight and extraordinarily handsome. He was the person they had just been discussing, the fickle Chang Wong Jing Xiao. When everyone saw the visitor clearly, they knelt down one after another and saluted. Greetings to His Highness Cheng Wang. Waving his hand to let everyone rise, Jing Xiao, seeing that his Wang Fei was already standing in front of the carriage, lightly smiled and said, I was afraid that if you left late, it'd be hard to... I was afraid that if you left late, it'd be hard and too dark to travel, so I especially came to pick you up. I was keeping track of the time. Mu Han Jiang looked up at... I was keeping track of the time. Mu Han Jiang hooked up his lips and watched the man slowly drive his horse forward, stretching out a hand to himself. He didn't want to be excessively intimate in front of outsiders, but after seeing the jealous and fiery expression of Zhou Ying Ho in the corner of his eye, it was like the demons and gods were at work, making such a situation occur. He put his hand into his palm, bor borrowing the strength of the person on the horse to flip onto the horse, sitting in front of Jing Xiao. <laughs> Yunju, send, other bro send elder brother Zhou back first before returning to the villa. Muhan Jiang told the little boy servant standing at the side of the carriage, and after saying his farewells to everyone, confidently left with Jing Xiao, disappearing behind the clouds of dust. <laughs> du Ying Ho was so angry, his entire face turned red. Lin Gongzu and the others showed envious and admiring eyes. Only Jiu Jin, climbing into the carriage, was climbing into the carriage, was extremely happy. Being able to ride a luxu luxurious carriage with the imperial canopy, without having to pay for his way home. From that day on, the news that Cheng Wang doted on his Wang Fei spread quickly among the upper upper circles. It's so cute. It's so cute. I can't even. Fuck up. In view of the fact that the book of The Art of War was way too thick, with only one person to copy it, the fastest it would take would still be one month. In order to free up time to play and also appear to have acknowledged his mistake with a good attitude, Jing Xiao, Jing Xiao and Mu Han Zhang began to copy it together. Every morning, one would practice martial arts, one would deal with the inner household's affairs, and in the afternoon, they'd set up a table in the garden to admire the flowers together, copy books, and in the evening, soak in the hot springs together. Oh, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> the days passed extremely contentedly. Regarding the matters with Gu... with Ge Ruyi... Jing Shou wrote a letter and passed it on. After waiting for three days, there was still no news. Just after lunch today, Jing Shou was lying in the rocking chair with his Wang Fei in his arms, basking in the sun. Jing Shou was ordered. Jing Shou was ordered to the palace by an imperial decree. Oh shit. What is your opinion on the matter of the Southeast? Emperor Hong Zheng clasped his hands behind his back, looking at a map of the whole country in the imperial study, and asked Jing Xiao, who was kneeling behind him. Jing Xiao carefully worded, <coughs> The Ge family is not an influential clan. This matter must not have spread outside the Southeastern region. It is just that the woman came to the capital to complain. Urchen does not know how to handle this matter, only to report to Imperial Father and explain clearly. 
Emperor Hong Jiang nodded, but did not let Jing Xiao rise. Still looked at the map, still looking at the map of the country that occupied the whole wall in front of him. Do you know why the founder was conferred, was conferred the title of Fan Wang King of a Vassal State? Try that again. Do you know why the founder was conferred the title of Fang Wang King of a of a vassal state? In the former dynasty, the government was cruel. The founder and three others led a revolt against the government and seized power, and he preceded the others in capturing the capital, making himself emperor. Jing Xiao looked up, glancing at the numerous maps dating back to his first ancestors. The southwest, southeast, and the region of Huainan, those three pieces. Adding on the time he took to placate the rioting southern barbarians, it was quite disorderly, and he fought for an entire ten years. His benevolence received the whole country then conferred the southwest, southeast, and the regions of the Huainan to three who aided his attack, making them kings of those feudal territories. The issue regarding the vassal states. Zhen is not willing to manage too much. Emperor Hong Jiang's back was towards Jing Xiao, and he couldn't see his expression. But Jing Xiao knew that his imperial father was thinking, Thus speaking with a clear voice, <laughs> Although the Southwest is a vassal territory, it is also the national land of the country of Daqian. The citizens of the Southeast only recognize Imperial Father as their one emperor. When Emperor Hong Jiang heard this, he suddenly turned around and strictly stared at Jing Xiao, who was kneeling on the ground. Jing Xiao bowed his head slightly and let him stare. After a long time, Emperor Hong Jiang suddenly burst out laughing loudly. You are worthy of being Jen's son! <laughs> Walking to Jing Xiao's side, he patted him on the shoulder and quietly said, The third bout with the bar barbarians is what Jen is worried about. However... It is still not the right time yet. Jing Xiao's pupils suddenly contracted, but nothing was visible on his face. He kowtowed and said, Urchen understands. What his imperial father meant was that it was not yet a good opportunity to pacify the three vassal states. This matter first needed to be kept quiet. No matter in his previous life, no wonder in his previous life, Jing Yu brazenly tried, tied her. <laughs> no wonder in his previous life, Jing Yu brazenly tied her down to be his concubine. In the end, he forced her to have to, to have to personally go and take her revenge. It was also no wonder that Jing Yu, during that time, was the first to suggest taking away the power of the feudal territories. As it turns out, by this time, he had already received an affirmative answer from Imperial Father. So, just to reiterate, uh, where he says, no wonder in his previous life, Jing Yu, which is the fourth brother, brazenly tied her down to be his concubine. He's talking about Gu Ri Ruyi. Geruyi, um, the one who was almost run over by the carriage. So he's talking about her. So in the end, he forced her to have to personally go and take her revenge. So she's the one that went in southeast, I think, king, and took him out. But yeah. Clear as mud? Good. Ow. I'm okay. Anyone else do that? Anyone else say ow when it didn't actually hit you or hurt you? It was just a jolt, so, ow, I don't know. <laughs> All right, moving right along. 
<clears throat> Chapter 27 Hot Potatoes My brother-in-law was beaten, but his brother-in-law didn't help. I don't know. I have a theory, but I don't know. Oh, I said the magic word. <sighs> Sooner or later, the struggle for the three vassal territories will begin. What Emperor Hong Zheng so called the right opportunity had not yet arrived, only because there were no reasonable grounds for action. Just him robbing and murdering a civilian family was absolutely not enough to propose, to propose the withdrawal of the vassal hand, land. In his previous life, it was because Jing Xiao met with danger while fighting the Yunnan Tibet region that Emperor Hong Zheng ordered the Southwest King to send troops to reinforce him. How, uh, how could they have known that the Southwest King, on the grounds of little harvests and having suffered natural disasters, would make the imperial court first pay for army provisions before providing troops? provoking the emperor to become enraged, send an imperial decree about taking back the feudal territory? Send an imperial decree about taking back the feudal territory. At that time, Jing Xiao, who had spent much effort and had just defeated the southern barbarians, could not yet return to the capital and was imperially, decree imperially decreed to command the army and go west to directly fight the southwestern vassal territory. In this life, there was no need for him to go and expand efforts without getting any results in the disorderly campaign against the chaotic southern barbarian rebellion. <laughs> the sooner the war against the three vassal states began, the better. Jing Xiao was pondering deeply on his horse's back. Thus, when he snapped out of it, Xiao Hai had already somehow walked to the second imperial palace. He's a very smart horse. I love this horse. If you ever meet him in the by reading the Dong Wall, he's, he's a very good horse. No horse. Sorry. You rascal, stop thinking about the fresh grass in brother's residence. Jing Xiao pulled Xiao Hai's ears, finding it funny. Oh yeah, he's... Jing Xiao treats Xiao Hai hey, like, like, what, like a um, pet. Yeah, like a pet, which is rare. You don't usually see that. It's like, it's a vessel for getting, it's a car. <laughs> a lot of the times they look at horses more like cars and transportation, but no. Jing Xiao treats Xiao Hai more like a dog, and or like a pet. And you know how you just bug your pets? Just because you can? <laughs> it's like, I'm going to poke you <laughs> until you... Like, get tired of me. So that's what he's doing here. Jing Xiao pulled Xiao He's ears, finding it funny. Going to the second prince's palace as soon as he came out of the imperial palace would surely arouse suspicion. As he turned the horse's head from side to side, he ran into Jing Chen, who just returned after getting off duty. What are you doing standing in front of the door? Why not go in? Jing Chen stepped off his palaquin. I'm sorry. I, pal I call it palaquin. That's what we're going with. It's probably wrong, but I'm going with it. And saw his younger brother, bored, pulling at his horse's ear in front of the door. As a brother, he felt as if he had lost face and couldn't help frowning. The only man in the capital who would dare let their horse run loose in the middle of the street was this younger brother of his that caused him endless worries. This time he was in a daze in front of his own door. Could it be that he rushed himself into another disaster? Mm, more or less. Jing Xiao flipped himself off the horse, scratched his head, and said, Wanted to find a person to go drinking with. Unconsciously rode a horse to the front of elder brother's door. Jing Chen glared at him. You are this old now, still always thinking about riding horses and drinking wine. How unbecoming! 
Ching Xiao smiled and gave the horse to his elder brother's servant to lead away, himself walking abreast his brother. Let's go to Hui Wei Restaurant. It's very close to here. Jing Chen massaged his forehead, letting the palaquin porter return to the residence, walking on foot with Jing Xiao to Hui Wei Restaurant. He's such a good brother. I love him so much. This older brother is by far one of my favorite characters. I love him. He's so good for all the shit he puts up with. He's so good. <laughs> it was still not yet time for a meal, and there were not many people in Hui Wei Restaurant. Jing Xiao asked Boss Zhou, who was dressed in all... <laughs> who was dressed in all dark red silk for a private room. You know who this Zhou Jin is? Jing Chen saw the two's extremely familiar manner, couldn't help but wrinkle his brow. Of course I know. Jing Xiao poured a cup of wine for his elder brother. Xiao Yun is just and honest, and he's not inflexible with his service to other people. Xiao Yun is just and honest, and he is not inflexible with his service to the people. Elder brother can try to win him over to your side. If only you knew how to act appropriately, too. That would be good. Jing Chen nodded. Today, at the Ministry of Rights, there were officials talking about how the Cheng Wang Fei and the assistant minister Zhao's wife were close. Thinking that Cheng Wang and... Cheng Wang and Xiao Yun certainly must be involved with each other. He could see that his older brother mis He could see that his older brother understood the advantages and disadvantages of this and didn't plan to meddle. Since he saw his brother, he might as well just tell him about what happened in the palace, so that his brother was aware of all the things in his heart. As for the matter of Ge Ru Yi, Jing Xiao felt somewhat awkward about it. His imperial father's meaning was that the current situation was the most important thing to focus on. This matter was not enough to con constitute a reason for attacking the southeast. Even if in the future it was made public during the war, it would be just icing on the cake. If it was not handled properly, the people would think that the imperial court didn't care about whether their civilians were alive or dead, and was weak and incompetent. As for how he should handle this woman, it was completely left to him. If it's inconvenient for you, send her to my palace and give her to your sister-in-law to supervise, Jing Chen suggested. Seeing as the Cheng Wang Fei is male, he couldn't constantly be looking after her, and Cheng Wang's secondary wife had been demoted. She's a bitch. The second prince's official wife, although not extremely considerate or gentle, knew how to manage the inner household. I want to meet her. I haven't met her yet. I don't think so. Have I? Have we? Just a sec. We met... We met his... We met Jing Chen's... He called her his consort. There's a consort. They would have called her his official wife. I don't know. I don't know if we met her. She didn't seem like who was um, someone who was inconsiderate or rough. So, I don't know. I don't know. I'm curious. Jing Xiao knit his brows. Gi Ru Yi was key to dealing with the Southeast. He snatched her up because he didn't want the fourth prince to delay her killing the Southeast king so that he could fight fewer years. However, he could not explain this to his brother, so he shook his head and said, This person is still useful. Let me go back and discuss it with Jun Xing. Jing Chen nodded. Towards that person that just crossed the threshold with his younger brother not long ago, he was very satisfied with. He was of great er, he was of great erudition and scholarship, conducted himself modestly, just right for helping Jing Xiao, who was not good at dealing with schemes and tricks. This is true. 
As they were speaking, a burst of noise from below interrupted the two's conversation. Young masters, if you have something to resolve, then please just speak calmly. The waiter tried to dissuade them from a brow beat. The waiter tried to dissuade them with a brow beaded with sweat to no avail, as the two people grappling with each other didn't even hear his urging. Jing Xiao opened the door to take a glance, only to see two men wearing luxurious clothing fighting into a ball in the lobby. Their kung fu was not very good. It could be said that they fought without an ounce of elegance. The man of taller stature seemed to currently have the upper hand, hitting the other guy into the ground. Jing Xiao looked at the slightly familiar-looking person who had been beaten who had been beaten into the ground. Staring a little closer, wasn't it the Mu Ling Bao that he had just seen a few days before? One of his eyes was still bruised. As for the other person... <laughs> heir, heir of Duke Mao's household. Jing Chen, seeing that he couldn't recognize who it was, spoke to remind him. The Empress, the day before yesterday, let out a rumor of her wanting to pick a Wong Fei for the fourth prince. Duke Mao and the North Marquess both have daughters, first five, both have daughters of first wives that have not yet married. Qing Xiao, hearing these words, immediately understood clearly. He couldn't help but sneer. The plan the North Marquess's family was trying to execute was actually quite good. But pity that afterwards, in his previous life, it was Duke Mao's daughter that was married in. In the very end, when he suffered false accusations and was thrown in prison, the fourth prince's father-in-law's contributions couldn't go unnoticed. If the North Marquess is later connected to them by marriage, you must stay farther away from them in the future. In front of younger sister-in-law, don't bring up court politics too often. Jing Chen closed the door so as to avoid the people below from seeing Jing Xiao. After all, his wife's older brother was being pressed down and beaten up, yet this younger brother-in-law was not helping. If this was spread around, then it wouldn't look good. Upon hearing his brother's words, Jing Xiao's heart became a little uncomfortable. From his point of view, Zhen Qing was more worth his trust than anyone. But his brother was saying that for his good. But his brother was saying that for his good. Thus, he coldly snorted and said, Mu Ling Bao and his dear sister, born from the first wife, are of the same morality and conduct, spoiled rotten by the North Mar Marchioness. Even if they want to think about pulling the Nor North Marquess to their side, I bet they won't even be willing to marry a girl like her to Jing Yu. Wait, what? Sorry, sorry, could I read? <laughs> Why did they go find my or work for me? I bet they won't even be willing to marry. I bet. Oh, okay. Let me do that again. <clears throat> Mu Ling Bao and his dear sister, born from the first wife, are of the same morality and conduct, spoiled rotten by the North Marchioness. Even if they want to think about pulling the North Marquess to their side. I bet they won't even be willing to marry a girl like her. I bet they won't even be willing to marry a girl like her to Jun Yu, Jing Yu. Jing Chen, hearing this, muttered to himself irresolutely. If Mu's family young lady is truly how you say she is, then it would be better for us. Brother! Jing Xiao immediately interrupted his older brother's words. The military power in the North Mark, Mark The military power in the North Marquess's hands does fall short of Duke Mao's, but his troops are stationed in the Northwest. Right now we are currently preparing to conduct a horse trade with the Northwest. 
This is much more useful than Duke Mao. Is that so? Hearing this, Jing Chen frowned and thought deeply for a moment. Since it's like this, I will have people leak these details to the Mu family's young lady to... <clears throat> Since it's like this, I will have people leak these details about the Mu family's young lady to the emperors. Jing Xiao, having heard this, secretly relaxed. He believed in Zhen Qing, but had no way of explaining it to his elder brother. Zhen Qing being part of that family was already hard to deal with. If the fourth prince and the north marquess were connected by marriage, in the future, when the two sides would oppose each other with equal harshness, then what position would Zhen Qing, with that kind of soft heart, be put in? I really don't think you gotta worry. Mm -hmm. When he returned to his villa, it was already dark. Jing Xiao walked into the bedroom and saw Mu Han Zheng wearing white clothing from head to toe, leaning on the divian quietly reading. Soft candlelight shone on his face, a kind of peaceful beauty. He couldn't help but hook up the corner of his lip, looking at this person. Looking at this person. He only felt that all the unrest on the surface of the court and all the crafty machinations underneath seemed to totally disappear. <clears throat> Slowly walking over, he buried his face into his Wong Fei's chest, deeply breathing in the faint sweet scent on his body. Jing Xiao relaxed his body, slowly closing his eyes. Being reborn, his life was still filled with foul wind and bloody rain. Only being at Mu Han Zheng's side, was he able to feel at peace. This person was the sole redemption the heavens gave him. What's wrong? Did you suffer Imperial Father's admonishment? Muhan Jang rubbed the big head at his chest. No. Just a little tired. <clears throat> no. Just a little tired from running around all day. That's all. Jing Xiao raised his head to look at him. This type of gentle and handsome appearance was completely different from that round-faced Mu Ling Bao who had one black eye. Suddenly, he thought about the painting he saw in the North Marquess's office the day they went to visit. Jinxing, this generation of your family, were you named according to the Nine Ancient Weapons? The family is just like this. The three of us brothers and sister have the names of the three treasured knives. Mu Han Jang spoke with a warm voice. His father loved famous weapons silly. Even his sons and daughters' names were chosen in this way. <clears throat> the nine weapons from the ancient times. Three knives. The first, Ling Bao. The second, Han Jang. The third, Siji. Jing Xiao furrowed his brows. That young lady of the Mu family's maiden name is Mu Siji? Mu Han Zhang nodded his head. Why did you suddenly think of asking this? Is it that the fourth prince wants to pick an official wife now? I was only curious. Jing Xiao shifted forwards. If your younger sister looks like Mu Ling Bao, then I'm afraid she'll be very hard to marry off. <laughs> How could there be that kind of terrible luck? He glared at the... No. How could there be that kind of terrible luck? He glared at the person on him talking drivel. But thinking about Mu Ling Bao's face becoming that of a woman's, Mu Han Jing himself also couldn't help but laugh out loud. The next day... Jing Xiao found Gi Ru Yi, who was temporarily staying in the small courtyard. It could not be contested that Gi Ru Yi, who had washed and changed into new clothing, was indeed very beautiful. One could only imagine what kind of beauty the eldest son of the Gi family had for this 
One could only imagine what kind of beauty the eldest son of the Guy family had for the Southwest King to not hesitate to murder the entire Guy family to obtain. The situation is like this right now. The Southeast King is killing people on his own feudal territory. The court cannot control it much. This kind of thing, even if you go investigate, he can just press a big criminal charge on the Gu family, and at most it would make him seem as if he was just being severe in governance. Jing Xiao lightly sighed. The hope in Gi Ruyi's eyes instantly darkened. Her pair of slim and soft hands gradually turned pale from her grip. Some of the words should not be said, but Beng Wang can tell you this. The Imperial Court will sooner or later take back the Southeast feudal territory, but it will still take some time. Jing Xiao looked at her, slowly clasping his hand around the short knife at his waist. He already understood the personality of the Southeast King. It would be the same result if he were to find someone else to assassinate him, though it would take some trouble. However, if Guy Ruyi were unable to recognize others' good intentions, it would be disastrous to keep her here. <clears throat> Wang Yi's willingness to... Wang Yi's willingness to rush there for this commoner girl is already a great kindness to this commoner... is already a great kindness, and this commoner girl knows that this revenge will not be rapid repaid overnight. Gi Ruyi was silent for a mo while, then suddenly knelt down and kowtowed for Jing Xiao. Thank you for Wang Yi's care these days. Your great kindness and virtue will definitely be reported to the ministers. Jing Xiao slowly loosened his hand on the knife. This woman was not only brave and resourceful, but also understood matters more than ordinary people. When he saw her body covered in blood in the southeastern king's palace, he sincerely admired this determined woman. This was also why he was unwilling to trick and make use of her. But to speak the truth, his reason in the end was that Gi Ru Yi and her in his last life were the same. Risking everything and putting forth all her efforts, Yet in the end, she still lost everything. Ben Wang will give you two options. The first, stay in the capital. In doing so, you must not cause a disturbance. After a few years, Ben Wang will naturally give you a chance to get your justice. Second, Ben Wang will have a person teach you the martial arts methods of concealed weaponry. This will help when you... In this will help when you infiltrate the Southeast King's palace. You take your revenge yourself. Jing Xiao calmly gazed at Gi Ru Yi kneeling on the ground. His tone was steady and solemn. If you do not know what to choose, then wait until you've decided and to come find Ben Wang. I choose the second option. Gi Ru Yi nearly instantly gave him her answer. You have to think about this clearly, Jing Xiao frowned. If you don't go, Ben Wang can find a good family for you to marry into. This commoner girl will not go back out of this promise, asking Wang Yi to help accomplish this. Yi Ru Yi kowtowed to Jing Xiao three times, afraid that Jing Xiao wouldn't give her this chance. After leaving the small courtyard, Jing Xiao saw the waiting Mu Hanjiang standing beneath the peach blossom tree. How did you anticipate that she would How did you anticipate that she would be determined on choosing the second option? Jing Xiao asked. This method was the result of, di of discussion with his Wang Fei yesterday. Mu Hanjiang smiled, picked a peach blossom and tossed it into the water. When willow leaves enter the water, they are like rootless duckweed, might as well become wildfire. Even if it ruins oneself, it will also ignite and burn one's enemy. 
Jing Xiao, hearing these words, only felt that he had enlightened him with perfect wisdom. To him, being reborn in this life, if he didn't have Zhen Qing and his brother to help him along, he was afraid he would become like how Gi Ru Yi was, completely reckless, also only wanting to be able to kill his enemies. Even if he had to overturn the whole country, he still wasn't, wouldn't hesitate. In the blink of an eye, it was the last third of the fourth month. The fourth prince's house confinement was finally over. After some persuasion, Emperor Hong Jiang also gave his nod of approval to the matter of choosing a Wang Fei for him. And yet, Jing Xiao was still at home copying books. As the proper re as the proper response of an elder brother, he sent his own beautiful concubine over, as if it were a celebratory gift congratulating of the lifted ban and also as amends for snatching his younger brother's beauty. I do love this story. Oh shit, I need to hydrate. What did you think of my horse sound? <laughs> well, I've already got crickets, and I've got thunder with rain. I think I'm going to need to add a horse sound. There's already been, what, three freaking horse sounds in this. And I listened to myself do the freaking nay of the one of the earlier chapters. Wait a minute. This has... Okay. Hold on one sec. This has stars and it shouldn't. When ticket... You're going to see my background. Don't uh, spread it around because I don't think I'm supposed to show fan art. Let me just see here. I thought I was way past it, but I need to make sure. I'm also going to rest my face for a second. No, it looks good. I must have just forgotten to take the stars out of it. Mm, yeah, it looks like. Because I, I knew I checked it before we started. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It looks good right about there. So these three little stars that you see here, these dot, 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 that I put that there, excuse me, when I'm editing, making sure all the um, spaces are where they need to be. And so I take those out when I'm done editing a chapter. But I didn't take them out. I don't know. I think I've edited up to like chapter 30 something. 34, 30 something. I guess to have a little bit more water. My face is tired. Okay, but we're moving right along. I don't think we're going to get done before nine, but I'd like to try. Uh, in the nest. I'd really like to get done before 9.30, so we'll see. Whew. But we stretch the face, we stretch the Oh. <laughs> okay. And marker. Chapter 28. Foreshadowing. The matter becoming the prince's mansion has always been the prince's master, and it is useless for the mother to lose her temper with her son. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I like the court intrigue. I really do. My favorite thing about court intrigues, though, are when you have the husband and wife. Oh, excuse me. They're the husbands. And they're like, it's them against the world. It's like they're always working together. They're a team. They they work together. They feed off each other. Like, that's that's my favorite aspect. Like... It's like, ye, the court intrigue, they're going to beat it because they're together. That kind of thing. It's like they think in different ways for each other. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. I love it. Okay. 
The fourth prince received this congratulatory gift, yet wasn't even able to get a little bit happy about it. He was fully aware that this concubine was the one that the eldest prince had sent Jing Xiao that year. Now that Jing Xiao had sent her to him, untouched, he wouldn't even be able to throw this trouble out. Mm -hmm, tiny smart. Elder brothers could send their younger brothers beauties, yet there wasn't a basis for younger brothers to send their elder brothers a concubine. Below him, there were no other younger brothers that had come of age. <laughs> this poor woman. Hot potato, hot potato, hot potato. <laughs> oh, is that what they meant by... Oh, no, I thought one of the chapters... <laughs> I thought one of the chapters was called Hot Potato. Was it the last one? That'd make a lot more sense. I would. I get it now. Oh. Okay, sorry, excuse me. Actually, Jing Xiao had already finished copying the books for a while. It was just that after living so leisurely for such a long time, he did not want to go back to morning court. Mu Hanjiang urged him to return to court at the earliest possible time. The situation in court changes in the blink of an eye. Now that the fourth prince has returned to court, it is still best for you to be careful. Thus, he said... Thus, he set Giru Yi aside with Ghost of Nine Blades to learn the art of concealed weaponry, and also assigned... Ren Feng was secretly tidying up the desolate forest in the east, eastern suburbs. When Jing Xiao unwillingly packed up their luggage and returned to his palace with his Wang Fei, the fourth prince returned to court on the third day. The Chang Wang, Chang Wang had also finished copying the art of war ten times. Sorry, so you see these big things? This is clearly I have not finished this. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a bitch until I... Okay. It's just these two. It's just these two. We'll get through them. Okay, let me try this. Chin Chown. Unwillingly... Okay. Okay, so I'm going to do that again. Thus he set Giru Yi aside with Ghost of Nine Blades to learn the art of concealed weaponry and also assigned Ren, Ren Feng with secretly tidying up the desolate forest in the eastern suburbs. Then Jing Xiao unwillingly packed up their luggage and returned to his palace with his Wang Fei. The fourth prince returned to court on the third day. The Chen Wang, Wang, Chen Wang had also finished copying the art of war ten times. He didn't do it himself. Emperor Hong Jiang flipped through all of it in front... <laughs> of the whole court, asking a few questions about the content. As he was able to reply all the questions quickly and fluently, his imperial heart was very pleased, bestowing upon the Cheng Wang gifts, ten bolts of satin from tributes as well as a bucket of pearls. All the court counselors said, although the Cheng Wang wouldn't be able to inherit the throne, the emperor's doting never ceased. Only Jing Xiao knew that his imperial father rewarding him was because of his standpoint on the three vassal states. Nothing more than just encouraging him with some flattery. That's all. This satin from the tributes was good stuff. Jing Xiao intended to have a few new sets of clothing made for him in Jinxing. As for this bucket of pearls, actually, it didn't have much use. Nowadays, the women folk in his, in his palace only had Song Ling Xin left, and every time he saw her, it made him annoyed. He let Mu Han Jiang take this bucket of first-rate pearls to return to the North, North Marquis's residence to split between his father-in-law's sisters and wives. Fuck, that would suck. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just imagining living with your sister-in-law's your sisters, and your husband's extra wife. That would fucking suck. It just would. That'd be awful. Shoot me. <laughs> I don't even have sisters, and I'm going, fuck that. 
Mu Hanjiang knew he wanted to help him make a good reputation and naturally did not brush away his good intentions. He had Du Fu go into the storeroom to pick a few other gifts to bring along. Then, taking Yang Ju, he went back to the North Marquis's residence for a trip. A bucket of pearls, two handfuls for each of his aunts, one handful for each of his sisters, for each of his father's concubines, twenty pearls, and for the rest, half went to his paternal grandmother in showing filial respect, and the other half was for the North Marchioness. Oh, I love this one. Oh, aren't these pearls from the tributes? Each of them are so smooth and round, so plump. I almost, I also saw a few of these over at my mother's place. The big-mouthed third aunt held the pearls in her hands and fondled them admiringly, talking incessantly. I like this one. As for the rest of the aunts and sisters, they also wore smiles. Each of them called Wang Fei very affectionately. Chu Yinang's body had, been, had already recovered. Standing behind the North Marchioness, she wore a body of splendid clothing. Seeing her son with such an imposing aura, finally she was relieved a little. The North Marchioness was cold-faced from beginning to end. Without even saying a few words, she began to criticize Mu Hanjang. You are a man. You can't leave behind children. As a wife, you should be more virtuous and kind. Now Wang Yi doesn't have a single heir. Yet you've practically caused all the concubines to be sent away. I don't even have the face to go out. I know that you are young and ignorant. The people who don't understand these things will think I didn't treat my son, teach my son well. The third wife, who had originally been talking to the fourth wife, radiant with delight about a concoction using pearls that would help maintain a youthful appearance, stopped talking when she heard this. Once that conspicuously sharp voice stopped, the whole hall quieted. Although the North Marchioness is the first wife, Mu Hanjang is now the Wang Fei of a prince. His ranking is even higher than the North Marchioness's. Everyone was somewhat embarrassed and did not know what to do. Mu Hanjang slowly put down his teacup, somewhat looking at Lady Du with ridicule. She would say these words only because Jing Xiao sent the fourth prince a concubine, afraid that if she married her daughter over, then she would suffer grievances. Really? Already acting as if the fourth prince had become her daughter's husband? Mother has overthought this. This son had only learned from the aunt... This son had only learned from the analytics of Confucius and five classics of Confucianism from a young age. The one who taught this son was a scholar from our family. Even if this son is unable to perform the Confucian moral injunctions for wives, the madams in the capital will not mock you. Wu Hanjiang slowly rubbed his cup with his fingers. A somewhat pointed meaning, he said, the matters of Cheng Wang's palace, Wang Yi has already decided them. Mother getting angry at this son is of no use. The North Marchioness placed the cup in her hand on the table heavily, glared at him for a while, then slowed down her manner of speaking. It's not that I'm telling you off. Since you have already married... You have to think about your husband's family. Wang Yi is young. You must advise him often. Since it is already no longer possible for him to main obtain the throne, then we must make another path for ourselves. If Su Ji can be married to the fourth prince, then Wang Yi and the fourth prince will become connected. In the future, if there is ever somewhat... In the future, if there is ever some what-if, then there will still be a way out for us. 
Lu Hanjiang listened to this remark, but only felt that it was incomparably ludicrous. Did Madame Du think he was a three-year-old? Did being husbands of siblings make people closer than being actual brothers? In the imperial family, even some blood brothers plotted to destroy each other. A connective relationship through marriage was worthless. He could not help but sneer. The matter of younger sister's marriage. How could the elder brother I was married off to make the decision? Besides, only Empress Mother has the final say. Even if Wang Yi is willing, it is of no use. You! The North Marchioness was so angry she couldn't even speak. But everything Mu Hanjiang had said was very reasonable. Her daughter's marriage was not yet determined. Saying too much would affect her reputation as a lady. She could only glare at him for a long time then having no choice but to drop the subject. Mu Hanjiang is a man. Even if this is his parents' home, he still could not sit in the inner residence for too long. Guessing at the time, it should be around the time when the North Marquess should have left court and returned. Thus he stood up and took his leave to see his father. Meanwhile, a big thing happened in court today. The king of the Southwest sent a request. The tribute that the Southwest fiefdom had sent was plundered. As this borderland was poor, they requested that this year's expected tribute be decreased. Officials, how does everyone view this matter? Emperor Hong Jiang held the Southwest king's pale yellow envelope with the request and asked with a low voice. The southwest is close to Yunang, Tibet. This place nowadays is in upheaval. If the tribute has been plundered away, then there is truly no helping it. In Chen's point of view, this tribute can be decreased, the Minister of Revenue said elegantly. Daring to pilfer the tribute, this flock of petty thieves are truly savage, in Chen's point of view, we should send soldiers to go encircle and suppress them, to re-seize the tribute, the Minister of War said resentfully. The, reno the renovations of the summer villa this year urgently requires the use of marble from the southwest. If the tribute is reduced, we must still have marble from the southwest sent to us, the Minister of Works said, flustered. Originally, he thought that the marble could be delivered by the sixth lunar month, so he didn't buy any other stone materials. Now, even if it was sent again, he, would, he estimated that it would still take until the seventh month to arrive in the capital. No matter how they hurried to get it done, he feared that it would still delay the emperor's stay in the summer villa. All the officials, one would say, one would say something and another would say something else, arguing endlessly. Emperor Hong Jiang's brows knitted together tighter and tighter. His gaze swept towards the three princes. What do you three think? The fourth prince had just returned to court and was impatient to prove himself. Seeing his imperial father was annoyed, he stepped forward and said, Urchin heard the news that the Southwest has encountered. Urchin has heard the news that the Southwest has encountered a spring drought. The common people are miserable. Now that the tribute has been robbed, it's made things worse. For lack of a better option, we should lower the tribute to show towards the common people of the Southwest the man manifestation of our benevolent integrity. Emperor Hong Jiang's eyes deepened. One couldn't tell whether he was happy or angry. Regarding the fourth prince stepping forth and speaking before his elder brothers, there wasn't any deeper meaning. Turning to look at the second prince, who had his eyes lowered, not speaking. <clears throat> Jing Chen, what do you think? Jing Chen stepped forward, bowed in etiquette, and said, 
The tribute that the imperial court collects is not to covet those riches, but to keep the three vassal states in check and show the power of the heavens. Tribute, suddenly robbed in transit. The blame is on the southwest, not the imperial court. Therefore, Urchan thinks that the tribute should not be reduced. His voice was steady and powerful, not too hurried or too slow, with a pause after each sentence, making his words resonate. The noisy court hall suddenly became absolutely silent. The icy and severe look in the Emperor Hong Jang's eyes gradually warmed, revealing a gratified appearance. But he did not say anything. He proceeded to look at Jing Xiao, at the side who had a face of impatience. Jing Xiao, what do you want to say? <laughs> the journey to transport the tribute from the northwest. The journey to transport the tribute from the southwest to the capital doesn't even pass through the Yunnan Tibet region. Moreover, half of the tribute is made of marble weighing up to a thousand caddies. What kind of mountain burglar would want to rob this kind of tribute? Jing Xiao stood in his original place and also did not make any salute. He opened his mouth and just spoke with an appearance as if he had been annoyed all, by all the court's officials. Hong Zheng, Emperor Hong Zheng, hearing this in such a frank and boorish manner of speaking, not only did not get angry, but on the contrary, actually hooked up the corner of his mouth. Like this, do you all understand? The final result was that the Emperor Hong Zheng sent people to investigate the matter of the robbery of the tribute. As for the choice of candidate, it was actually someone who had not yet spoken up about the matter in court. The Southwest King first sent the marble material to come in advance of the rest, and the matter of reducing tribute was not mentioned, but pushed down for the time being. After withdrawing from court, Emperor Hong Jang called on Jing Qian, the second prince, to come to the imperial study alone. Jing Xiao patted the dejected fourth prince on the shoulder, then turned to grab a hold of the North Marquess who was about to go home. Does Wang Yi have any advice? Mu Jin politely walked. Yeah. Yeah. Mu Jin politely walked out with Jing Xiao. Father-in-law is exaggerating. Today, Jun Qing returned to the Hu... Father-in-law is exaggerating. Today, Jun Qing returned to the Hu... Hmm. Hu, yeah. Oh, Hu. Jun Qing returned to the Hu Fu. I'll pick him up with you on the way. Jing Xiao smiled lightly. Han Zheng went to the Hu Fu. Mu Jin, hearing this, couldn't help but show a somewhat smiling expression. That's great. Wang Yi can stop by for lunch and then go back. And then I won't be polite. Just the right time to have a couple of drinks with Father Marquis. I keep thinking about the hard liquor from the Northwest we had last time. Jing Xiao... <laughs> Jing Xiao laughed and let the North Marquis walk ahead, flipping himself onto his horse. Mu Jin looked at Jing Xiao, who was respectful and cordial, and then glanced at the fourth prince, who was still walking with his head lowered not too far away. He couldn't help but frown slightly, turning away to get on the carriage. The North Marchioness's health had become poor a few years ago. Oh, sorry. The old Marchioness's health had become poor a few years ago. She was bedridden all year round and hardly received any visitors. This is his grandmother. Muhan Jang went to visit his grandmother and offered up the rare medicinal herbs he had brought. The gray-haired old lady grabbed his hand to chat for a moment. Oh, I might cry. She reminds me of my gram. Grandmother is now old and doesn't manage much now. But you've married into the royal family. You must be careful in speaking and doing things. You should also take care of your husband. Since you are married, 
be together in happiness and sorrows, and must not harbor resentment. It is not easy for Chang Wang. It is not easy for Chang Wang to be of the imperial family. When Empress Yan was still alive, what circumstances he was in. How does he live nowadays? People's hearts are made of flesh. If you don't treat him well, he also won't treat you badly. If you treat him well, he also won't treat you badly. The old marchioness spent her whole life in the Marquis's household, and she was able to see things extremely clearly. This grandson understands. Grandmother need not worry. Wang Yi treats grandson very well. Wu Han Jiang grasped his grandmother's hand with both of his, and warmth bubbled forth from his heart. Since he was young, his grandmother loved him dearly, although perhaps not as much as the legitimate grandson of the first wife. But she has never once been excessively biased. If there were people who tried to make things difficult for him, his grandmother would still try to protect him, so that he suffered a lot less grievances. The old marchioness was getting late in her years now, and she became weak after a few words. Muhan Jang held his grand helped his grandmother lie down and rest, then withdrew. Once he walked into the front yard, he ran into a flock of cousins who had just come back from their studies. Oh, if it isn't the Wang Fei. What happened? Did you suffer some grievance at the prince's palace and came back to your mother's house to cry about it? Mu Wang Mu Young Wen, seeing Mu Han Jiang, habitually tried to jab at him with a couple of sentences. His younger brothers behind him, hearing this, could not help but roar with laughter. Plebes. Okay, we're doing good, we're doing good. I have to wonder if I'm actually streaming. Hmm. It says that I am. It says that I'm recording. Let me just... Shoot, not that. Let me see, what will this be? Let me just check and make sure that I am... Yeah, I am. And it's in... Reading fun. Oh, it could be this. Let me just see here. Let me see if... If my theories... Are correct. Categories. Reading fun. No. No, it's everyone else has viewers. It's it's just me. Ah well. Hmm. I really should put the um the cover somewhere on here, I feel. Or just get the covers pre-done and put them up. I don't know if that's possible. It's probably possible. It seems like something I should be able to do. All right. How are we doing? It's 8.49. We can absolutely 100% do this. Get this done by 9.30. We can do it. So let's go. Let's go. Why does my... I really got to get this rigging fixed. I've got to get a new rigger. I've got to save up and pay for a new rigger because it's just, it's not working for me. Okay. Oh, is this? Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so, please bear in mind that this story does uh, have some adulty themes in it and some adulty things in it. <laughs> So keep that in mind. I don't think we'll get to 18 plus in this next chapter, but I've been wrong before. And if this, the chapter title is what I think it's about, we might be getting some. All right. All right. Oh, okay. Let's go. Mark of this. 
Chapter 29. Balm. And it's B-L- B-A-L-M, not balm like a kaboom, like balm like a salve, like a cream. I finally, I finally heard what it was, and a handsome face couldn't help but turn red. Mu Han Jang looked at the arrogant Mu Ying, Mu Yang Wen, ah, Mu Yang Wen coldly, walked slowly over, raised his hand, and slapped him right on his smugly laughing face. Mu Yang Wen was stunned by the slap, slowly coming to. Mu Hong Jang, you dare hit me? Another slap made Mu Yang Wen completely stunned. I am your elder. How can you just speak to me like that? Hasn't Third Uncle ever taught you what filial piety is? Mu Han Jang looked down from above at his cousin, who was reeling from being hit. Mu Han Jang, you go too far! On the other side, when Mu Han Feng, Mu Hua Feng, saw his younger brother was hit, he raised his fist about to make a move. The two guards behind Mu Han Jang pulled out the swords at their waists, which scared everyone to recoil back half a step. The younger of them directly began to cry. Everyone stop! The North Marquis's deep and resounding voice came from behind as he came forth spitting with anger. The crowd of people in the Mu family habitually trembled when they heard the voice of the head of the household. Hearing it today... Yet hearing it today, they all felt relieved. Jun Qing! Jing Xiao rushed over and hugged his Wang Fei in his arms. Are you okay? Mu Han Jiang pursed his lips tightly. He could not help but tilt his lips slightly upward. In any way you looked at it, it was him teaching others a lesson. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. Mu Han Jiang pursed his lips tightly. He could not help but tilt his lips slightly upward. In any way you looked at it, it was him teaching others a lesson. This fellow is really... When Jing Xiao saw that the person in his embrace was all right, he turned to Mu Yang Wen, who was covering his face, and Mu ha Hua Feng, who forgot to take back his fist. Father Marquis, leaving aside the fact that Zhen Qing is my Wang Fei, in the North Marquis's household, don't you have to respect your elder brothers? The etiquette of filial piety in the Mu family is really opening Ben Wang's eyes. M Mu Jin was so angry that his face turned green one second and white the next. He pointed his two nephews and said, you two, go and devote yourselves to work within each, with the each company, with each copying filial piety fifty times each. If you can't finish copying it, you can't eat dinner. Mu Wang, Mu Yang Wen still wanted to say something, but was glared at by Mu Jin and had to follow his brothers, turning away and leaving. Wait. Jing Xiao let go of his Wang Fei and stopped them with a shout. The laws of the family and the laws of the country are inseparable. Disrespect to a Wang Fei? Is it not a crime? Without Mu Ling Bao around, the two brothers had no backbone. They looked at each other. Only then did they feel afraid, looking pe pleadingly to their uncle for help. Wang Yi... Please quell your anger. Little children don't understand things. Mu Jin also felt somewhat in an awkward situation and looked at Mu Han Jang, who was standing half a step behind Jing Xiao. Mu Han Jang, seeing the situation, went up and grabbed Jing Xiao's arm, gently urging him. It's all right. They're all brothers of the family. Don't be angry anymore, Wang Yi. Jing Xiao heard these words and patted his lustrous and slender hand. If the Wang Fei doesn't care to bother with this, 
then this matter will be considered over. If in the future Ben Wang sees anyone disrespect the Wang Fei, don't blame don't blame Ben Wang for falling out and becoming hostile with them. The flock of cousins all shrank back their heads, getting Mu Jin's approval, and left gloomily. Third brother, didn't Uncle send someone to tell us that we had... A sec. Oh, just a sec. Reading, 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 reading. Mm -hmm. Oh. Third brother, didn't Uncle send someone to tell us that we had a distinguished guest coming that we should accompany today? So he gave us half a day off? Why aren't we accompanying the guest now? The youngest brother asked in a small voice. Hush! The brothers on either side of him busily covered his mouth, then disappeared into the courtroom. Courtyard. Courtroom, courtyard. This old official... This old official's lax management of the household made Wang Yi see something embarrassing. Mu Jin sighed and looked at the beautiful Mu Han Zhang, standing tall and straight beside Jing Xiao with an extraordinary bearing. He could not help feeling a little sad. In this generation of the Mu family, the sons of the first wife, not one worked hard. Now it seemed that the one with a demeanor most akin to the Mu family was a bastard that had already been married off. When they returned to the palace in the afternoon, Steward Yun rushed Steward Yun, Steward Yun rushed up and said, Wang Yi, His Highness the Second Prince sent a person here for you today, wanting you to go there as soon as possible once you've returned. Jing Xiao knit his brows, and Mu Hanjiang said, Since brother is looking, since brother is looking for you with some great urgent matter, go quickly. Jing Xiao nodded turned around, getting on Xiao Hai, and riding out again. Mu Han Jiang took an afternoon nap in the bedroom. He had just gotten up, then heard from Young Ju that Zhou Jin, that Zhou Jin had come to visit. He quickly dressed and went to the tea room of the Listening Wind Pavilion. Elder brother Zhou has been waiting for long, Mu Han Jiang apologetically said. I just arrived. Huiwei Restaurant is the kind of business in which only afternoon do I get any leisure time. Zhou Jin smiled brightly. When Mu Hanjiang heard his words, he relaxed and asked if there was anything he needed. Didn't you, didn't you say you wanted to open a small shop last time? Zhou Jin drank a mouthful of tea. The tea varieties served in the prince's palace were all tribute tea distributed by the imperial household department products of the highest quality one could not even buy on the market. Towards Zhou Jin, who paid particular attention to eating and drinking, he naturally could taste the difference, and could not help but drink a few more mouthfuls. He said, All, all the products that should be in the capital are already in the capital. If the small shop does not have a long-established reputation— Business will not be easy to do, unless they sell some rare items. Rare items? When Mu Hanjiang saw that he liked the tea, he gave Yang Ju a meaningful glance, and Yang Ju, comprehending the hidden, me hidden meaning, turned to leave. Hmm. As for things the capital is missing, that is also good to sell. When I was in Jingnan... I did see an item, Zhou Jin said. Narrow, a narrow smile couldn't help but flash by on his face. Last night when I was going to bed, I suddenly thought of it. Oh, Mu Hanjiang was actually somewhat curious now. Something from Jingnan that is rarely seen in the capital. 
Why hasn't anyone sold it here yet? Zhou Jin smiled and took a sip of tea before he said two words. Perfumed ointment. Perfumed ointment? Luhan Zhang paused. What was that? He really hasn't heard of it before. <laughs> this thing sells very well in Jingnan. When I came with my husband to the capital, only then did I find out that northerners seldom use it. The only thing that's sold in town is perfumed oil that doesn't really have any scent. The corner of Zhou Jin's lips hooked up into an evil smile, delicately elaborating on the ideal usages of this kind of perfumed ointment. Any of you understand what he's saying? Because <laughs> if you think you might have an idea, it might be that. <laughs> In Jing... They're going to explain it here. In Jingnan, there are several well-known workshops specializing in perfumed ointments, which incorporate seasonal flowers and plants into them. There were many kinds. The uncoctus ointments were... Sorry. Yeah, I think so. The incautious ointments were, are different from oils. It can be placed and carried on person in a box, and it is very easy to use once it comes in contact with some warmth. Get it yet? It's just that these things are small, and the price is not so high. Merchants didn't think much of the small profit margin and refused to travel so far just to sell them. There are few flowers and plants in the north, and there are no workshops to make this. After listening for half a day, Muhan Jang finally realized what this thing was. His handsome face could not help completely turning red. The so-called perfumed ointment is the kind of grease used for lubricant during men's joyous times. Merchants looked for high profit margins. Although this kind of thing would be very popular in the capital where there, where there are many male wives, it could not be helped that the journey would be far and only reap a meager profit. So until now, few people have sold it. Zhou Jin gifted a box of unopened perfumed ointment to Muhan Zhang. Muhan Zhang looked at his calm face. They were both men. He secretly scolded himself for being so bashful. So he pressed down the embarrassment and accepted it calmly. He asked for the tea Yeonju had give, gotten as a gift in return. Zhou Jin also did not refuse it. He straightforwardly took the box of tea leaves and told him to go find him once he thought it over, then set off to his busy business at the Huiwei restaurant. Jing Xiao rushed, rushed to the second prince's palace. He couldn't help but be somewhat worried when he learned that imperial father was sending his brother to investigate the robbery of the tribute. <clears throat> imperial father is giving me a chance to obtain a title. This is a good thing. It will always be better than the war eldest imperial brother is fighting. Jing Chen, seeing that his little brother was concerned about him, felt extremely happy in his heart. The king of the southwest is a cunning man. Since he had already acted, he will certainly have left a backup plan. No matter what his brother says, Jing Xiao's brows wouldn't relax. How many troops does imperial father plan to send? This matter can only be made clear by investigating in secret so I've only been given four imperial bodyguards and one accompanying third-rank official. How is this okay? Jing Xiao almost jumped up. In his opinion, as his, brother's kung f as his brother's kung fu was not good yet, he was only given four guards. In the end, in the case that they ran into some mountain brigand, they would not be able to deal with them, let alone the southwest king, who held massive military power in his hands. I'll give you 500 people, and they'll follow from far away. If anything happens, then they can come. Where can 500 people hide? 
No. Jing Chen refused without even thinking about it. After a long bargaining process, the two brothers took a step back in compromise. Jing Xiao sent two martial arts ex experts to follow his brother's side. Another 50 soldiers dispersed and advanced in the southwest, awaiting, awaiting dispatch. Leaving the second prince's palace, Jing Xiao still felt uneasy. He had Yun Song go to his villa and assign Ren Feng to pick two top-notch experts. Returning to his bedroom in the east court, he saw his Wang Fei sitting alone under the light, in a daze with a small exquisite box in his hand. Quietly, he walked over, grabbed the box with one motion, and turned it around in his hand. What's this? He opened the lid of the box. Inside was a translucent, translucent, unconscious cream that released a burst of delicate fragrance. Not sickeningly sweet, but on the contrary, somewhat alluring. This, this is... Muhan Jang jumped, having been startled. When he recovered, his face quickly flashed red. A product Elder Brother Zhou gave me today. Oh? Jing Xiao raised his eyebrow and slowly moved closer to his Wang Fei's ear. Blowing on his flustered agate light ear, like ear, he asked, Then why is that your face this red? Mu Hanjang smoothed his lips, glared at Jing Xiao, grabbed back the box in his hand, and turned back into the inner room, ignoring him. Jing Xiao was stunned. Unexpectedly, his Wang Fei learned how to be temperamental with him. He pressed his fist to his lips and muffled his laughter, then entered the inner bedroom. Naturally, he recognized it. Although no one sold it in the capital, the Imperial Household Department brought, bought some every year. The law stipulated that people could only marry male wives and that the taking male concubines were not allowed. But those restrictions didn't apply to the Son of Heaven— and there are many male concubines in the imperial palace. Moreover, as he, a prince, married a male wife, the, that department would naturally bestow many of these kinds of things. Just in the cabinet above their bed, there were several boxes of good perfumed ointment. Entering the inner room, he saw his Wang Fei lying on the bed with his clothes still on, still in a huff, facing the wall and ignoring him. His ears that peeked through were still as pink as before. Jing Xiao restrained his laughter and pounced on the bed, hugging the man on the bed into his arms. Won't tease you any more. It truly is seldom sold in the capital. If you want to do this business, in fact, it's very easy to do. The general of the soldiers in Jinang... The general of the soldiers in Jingnan is a good has a good relationship with me. He sends letters every ten days. I can just ask him to, send, to also send some of that over every time. How would that be, how would that be worth it? If he refuses to ac accept money, then won't it become accepting bribes? Muhan Jang turned his head over and frowned. The small thing is not worth a lot of money. Whether it is from the angle of being friends or being ruler and subordinate, either way the Jin Jang either way the Jingnan general would not ask for that money. He just wanted to earn a living, so if he brought trouble to Jing Xiao, then the gains would not make up for the losses. Seeing Jin Qing was thinking about this for himself, Jing Xiao couldn't help kissing him on the corner of his mouth. You can be at ease. This fellow is famous for being stingy. He will absolutely make sure you give him the money and make sure you're not even one wen short. Perhaps he will even ask for extra travel expenses. I will have to make a good bargain with him. Oh, it's 9.10. We made it lots before. We got lots of time. This is great. Okay. Well, that is it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. So that was chapters 26, 27, 29, wait, 26, 
27, 28, 29, 4. There we go. 4. Had to count. Uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, we will continue on with chapter 30 and we'll go from 30 to 34 uh, with another four chapters. I hope you have enjoyed this episode to all of my lurkers out there. I do see you. Um, I don't think I have anything to report other than that. So yes, so tomorrow I will continue with uh, the next four chapters of The Wife is First. And then next Tuesday, uh, we will probably, probably be reading uh, the next four chapters. I can't remember what I left off on, but of uh, Married Thrice to Salted Fish. And excuse me, if I'm lucky, uh, we might be able to do uh, Married Thrice to Salted Fish both Tuesday and Wednesday next week. But don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on anything. I'm often wrong. Um, but yeah, so that's it. That's all. So, oh yeah, I wanted to mention, what did you think of Muhan Jang's new business? <laughs> so he's essentially, I'm not going to get vulgar about it, but he's selling um, lubricants. <laughs> he's going to be selling different nice smelling lubricants. But keep in mind, one of the things I love about Muhan Jang is that he's a business person, all in all. Um, so he's going to do this well and very creatively. And I was, when I first read that part, I'm like, oh, you're so smart. <laughs> so smart. Um, but yes, and then we're also worried about uh, Jing, Chen, Jing Chang um, going off to the southwest. It's not good. He's my favorite. We got to be careful. He's got to be careful. Um but yeah, so that's it. That's all. I hope you have enjoyed this evening. I hope you enjoyed the stream. And uh, if you're missing this, if you've missed any episodes and want to go back, I know they're not on Twitch, but they are on YouTube. So you can follow any of the links that's here on Twitch, or you can find uh, the library on YouTube, or just look for Sared. I'm everywhere. So you'll find it. Um... Yeah, so that's it. That's all. And I hope you have a great evening. And thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, happy listening. Good night.